Francis Adamson AC, Governor of South Australia, and Mr Rod Bunton. It's my pleasure to welcome you to Government House this afternoon for the presentation of the 2021 Governor's Multicultural Awards. As we start, just a few practical matters, please. Could you uh, ensure that your phones are turned to silent? Uh, we do have an, have an official event photographer, uh, but you're more than welcome to take private photographs, but please, if you could remain seated while doing so. If you don't wish to have your photo taken, just please make that clear to the uh, photographer and we can accommodate that, of course. Uh, this is being streamed live via Facebook and YouTube. The toilet facilities are located behind the catering marquee down there. Uh, and in the very unlikely event that we should have to evacuate, the two emergency exits are the main gates you came through and a gate onto Kintore Avenue down that direction. I now ask, if you can, that you please be upstanding for the arrival of Her Excellency, the Honourable Frances Adamson AC, Governor of South Australia, and Mr Rod Bunton, and remain standing for the playing of the Vice Regal Salute. seated. In addition to the members of the official party, I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the presence of the many other dignitaries who are with us today. The Honourable Stephen Marshall, MP, Premier of South Australia. The Honourable Zoe Bettison, MP, Shadow Minister for Multicultural Affairs, representing the Leader of the Opposition. The Honourable Jing Lee, MLC, Assistant Minister for the Premier. Mr. Joe Sokash, MP, Assistant Shadow Minister for Multicultural Affairs. Commander Emma MacDonald Kerr, RAN, Commanding Officer, Royal Australian Navy. Brigadier Graham Goodwin, CSC, Army Area Representative, South Australia. Air Commodore Ross Bender, Senior Australian Defence Force Officer, Edinburgh. Ms. He Lan Jing, Consul General of the People's Republic of China in Adelaide, and Dean of the Consular Corps, and consuls and honorary consuls from many countries. Ms. Adriana Christopoulos, Chair of the South Australian Multicultural Commission and all current members. His Honour Judge Ralph Sulio, Chair of the Judging Panel and all Judging Panel members. Chief Executives, Executives and Directors from State Government and Commonwealth Departments. And of course, the finalists for the 2021 Governor's Multicultural Awards. Welcome all. It's now my pleasure to invite Mr. Robert Taylor, Ghana, Naranjeri, and Naranga man to the stage to deliver the Welcome to Country Address. Please welcome Robert. Ladies and gentlemen, how are we? We good? Excellent. I'll ask you that again in a minute uh, in Ghana language. So first of all, before I begin, I'd just like to pay my respects to this instrument here, the humble didgeridoo. Uh, it doesn't traditionally come from down in this part of our country. It comes from the top of the Northern Territory in a place called Arnhem Land. And didgeridoo is only its nickname. It's only been called a didgeridoo for a short amount of time in the course of history, but for thousands of years been known as Yidaki. Can you say that one? Yidaki. Very good. So it's very important that I say Mangmak Yongul. Um, as the Yongle people are the people who, who found the significance in this instrument along with Mother Nature. So I say Mangmak Yongle, which is saying thank you in their language for sharing this instrument with us so we could be here today sharing the humble sounds with you. <clears throat> I did have planned, recently I haven't been telling my story, I've sort of just been playing a bit of the didgeridoo, uh, a bit of the yidaki, but I mean you can go on YouTube for that. So I'm sorry Mr Marshall if I'm going to bore you again with my story, but uh, Heather Crowell loves it anyway, so you know, she told me she could never get sick of it. But uh, this being a multicultural event, I thought I'd share some of the sounds of the land. 
So uh, if we can use our imagination, here in our beautiful country, we don't just have one Aboriginal language. We have actually over 250 different Aboriginal languages still surviving today. So the language that I speak to you is the language of the Ghana people, the Ghana people being the traditional owners of this place here, Adelaide. So um, in Ghana language, I'm going to teach you a few of the sounds of the animals. Now, if we can imagine a nice big red kangaroo hopping along, yeah? We call that one Tanda. Can you say that one? So that Tanda might sound something like this. Did you hear him? Yeah. Alright, so where there's a mummy kangaroo and a daddy kangaroo, quite often you'll find a, a baby joey. Chasing mum and dad, annoying them, I'm sure. Another beautiful animal that we have here in our beautiful country is that big flightless bird, the emu. In Ghana language, we call him kari. Can you say that one? Kari, that's right. Some people get it mistaken and they say curry. <laughs> and my uncle tells me that curried curry can be very, very nice. But that emu, that curry, is actually my totem, so I have to be the protector of that one, so you didn't hear that from me. So that curry makes a bit of a grunting sound. Another animal out there that we have here in our country that likes to have a good feed of the kangaroos and the emus is that wild dog, the dingo, yeah? He doesn't just like to eat babies. You nearly got it, that's all right. That dingo doesn't bark like other dogs, he howls like a wolf. <laughs> That's when all the kangaroos and emus will take off running, yeah? Having a good old laugh sitting up there in the gum tree is that little bird. Kookaburra, very good. Now, I must stress, because I know I'll give you the answer in the question, but I must stress, you know how many people do say koala? <laughs> and I'm sure no one here has ever heard a koala laugh before. So that kookaburra, that kookaburra we call him nungana. Can you say that one? <laughs> It never ceases to amaze me how such a little bird can have such big lungs, yeah? So, I go camping quite a bit up in the Riverland, and every morning there's this little kookaburra that wakes me up at about 6.30, 5, 6.30 in the morning, and I'm actually going up there tomorrow night, so I'm going to remember to take my boomerang with me. Yeah, we call the boomerang wadna in Ghana language. Can you say that one? All right, so this is a little bit of indigenuity, yeah? So tomorrow morning, on Saturday morning when I hear that little kookaburra, I'm going to sneak out of my tent and I'm going to chuck my boomerang at him. Got him. We have a cooker bar for dinner, yeah? Ladies and gentlemen, Nanki Yamena, Namani, Mani Nabudina Lukuyata, Tanda Ganya Ganyata, Nanai Robakari Karamutaila, Nanarindrina Ranga Kumagana Mirna, Mani Nalu Tampadigana Mirna, Kumana Lopana Yatanga in Berendi, Tavandalo Bukiana, Burkana, Kumagana Mirna Yalra, Nayakandalia, Yungundalia, Nachalia. So as I mentioned earlier, my name is Robert Taylor, and I come from three different Aboriginal groups, the Narenditi from the Coorong and lower parts of the River Murray, the Naranga from the York Peninsula, and the Ghana people from here in the Adelaide and Adelaide Plains. And on behalf of my Ghana elders and ancestors, I said, Manina Burnin Yalaku Yata, Tanda Ganya Ghana Yata, which means I'd like to welcome you here today onto the traditional land of the Ghana people and acknowledge that this is the traditional land of the Ghana people. So having said that, I would like to sing a blessing song. Um, if you have hearing aids, I might ask you to turn it down. This song comes from my heart, um, deep in my spirit. So it's like driving a, a nice big five litre 
it's sort of hard to kick it out of second gear, so I might not use the microphone for this one. But this one here, uh, I also I pay my respects to all Aboriginal people throughout the country, more importantly to all cultures that live in this country today, as we do live in one of the most multicultural uh, countries in the world. So it is a pleasure to be here today and uh, call upon the good spirit of our ancestors to come here, bless this land and bless each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you. So once again, I'd like to thank Your Excellency for inviting me out here tonight. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here for the Multicultural Awards, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Congratulations to all the, all the uh, nominees and all the recipients of the awards tonight. So please enjoy the rest of your evening. I say Natalia and Nakora. Thank you. Thank you very much, Robert. It's now my great pleasure to invite Her Excellency, the Honourable Frances Adamson AC, Governor of South Australia, to deliver her welcome address. The Honourable Stephen Marshall, Premier of South Australia, the Honourable Zoe Betterson, representing the Leader of the Opposition. The Honourable Jing Lee, MLC, Assistant Minister to the Premier. Mr Joe Sokash, Assistant Shadow Minister for Multicultural Affairs. Other distinguished guests acknowledged by the Official Secretary, nominees and their families. Friends all. Robert Aya, Gana Bokana Aya, Gana Mirna Aya, I acknowledge the Ghana people as the traditional custodians of the land on which we're gathering and pay my respects to the elders. Thank you, Robert, Robert Taylor, as always for your engaging welcome to country. It's a very great pleasure for Rod and me to host the Governor's Multicultural Awards here at Government House. For the past 15 years now, the awards have enjoyed a high reputation in South Australia. And I thank my predecessors, Rear Admiral the Honourable Kevin Scarce and the Honourable Hugh Van Lay for establishing and growing them. I recognise, in particular, the strength of the Honourable Hugh Van Lay's commitment to multiculturalism from the moment he stepped onto Australian soil. It is one of the reasons South Australians admire him and Lan so much. I am mindful, therefore, of my responsibility to steward these awards over the next five years. They highlight the importance of understanding and respecting diversity, bridging cultures, and harnessing the skill, energy, and enterprise of all of us who call South Australia home. While we've come from different backgrounds, we are all drawn together 
by a desire to make a lasting and positive contribution to our state. As governor, I was pleased to be able to give assent a fortnight after I was sworn in to the South Australian Multicultural Act 2021. The Act includes a parliamentary declaration recognising and acknowledging, firstly, the cultural, linguistic, racial and religious diversity of the people of South Australia, and secondly, that diversity is an asset and a valuable resource benefiting South Australia. In the words of the legislation, it brings richness to the South Australian community. Interculturalism, or the policies and practice practices that recognise and promote a deep understanding of and respect for all cultures in the community and which recognise and promote a dynamic, inclusive interaction between diverse groups within the community adds a further dimension. In Monash University's 2021 Mapping Social Cohesion Survey, 84% of all respondents agreed with the proposition multiculturalism has been good for Australia. For South Australia, support for that proposition was 88%. That says much about our commitment to multiculturalism, as does the strong bipartisan support evident again this afternoon for these awards. We began with the ancient, rich and enduring culture of the first Australians. Since European settlement in 1836, South Australia has had a proud history of welcoming people from all over the world. European pioneers, post-war migrants seeking sanctuary and a new life, settlers from our near region, refugees from strife-torn countries, all bringing diverse perspectives. Abiding cultural and spiritual bonds have developed over many generations intercultural understanding and respect for each other's values, views, skills and contributions has been nurtured and has grown. And this in turn has helped to ensure that our state remains a shining beacon of multiculturalism, not only in Australia, but across the world. This is our proud story. It has been a joy to return to South Australia and see people determined to work together and to reject division. That was clear when cold leaders encouraged their communities to keep our state safe by rolling up their sleeves and becoming vaccinated against COVID. The expertise and perspectives that multiculturalism brings us not only connect us with trade partners, they enable us to be more outward looking and they draw us closer to the people of other nations. Right now, they draw us closer to the people of Ukraine as they suffer invasion by Russia. Our hearts are with the thousand strong Ukraine-born community in South Australia, and we share their anguish for family, friends, and their former homeland. Finally, I thank everyone who's contributed to making the Governor's Multicultural Awards a success. Thank you to those who nominated a person or group deserving of recognition. Thank you also to the Judging Committee and its Chair, His Honour Judge Ralph Sulio, for your dedicated stewardship in selecting winners in nine categories from more than 90 nominations. I thank those, including each of you, whose passion, dedication and hard work makes South Australia an enviable place to live. Occasions such as this afternoon's are important because in celebrating multiculturalism, we celebrate who we are and what we aspire to be. Thank you, Your Excellency. It's now time to move on to the key part of today's proceedings, the presentation of this year's honours the 2021 Governor's Multicultural Awards. Before we start, uh, can I offer our thanks to the independent judging panel for once again reviewing the many incredible nominations with such care and dedication. Thank you. In 2021, we welcomed a commendable 90 nominations across the nine award categories, and today we are recognising 23 outstanding finalists on stage. 
For each category, I will first announce the finalists to individually make their way on stage, accept their certificate from Her Excellency, have their photograph taken, and then move towards the rear of the stage. After all the finalists have been recognised, I will then announce the winner, who will come forward to receive their award from Her Excellency. And I would ask all finalists to please remain on stage while I read the winner's citation. Your Excellency, I now invite you to present the 2021 Governor's Multicultural Awards. The first category of this afternoon's presentation is Arts and Culture. And the finalists for the Arts and Culture category are Adelaide Festival Centre, Students Got Talent Event, represented by Mr. Douglas Gautier. Mr. Farhan Shah. <laughs> Mrs. Mawa Abu Zaid. Mr. Leonard Shankalapore. <laughs> and lastly, Mrs. Noriko Talano. And I'm very pleased to announce that the winner for the Arts and Culture Award is Mr. Farhan Shah. <laughs> Mr. Farhan Shah has distinguished himself as a high caliber artist in the Sufi tradition, who is using his talent to inspire and connect people, and not just in South Australia. Dubbed the Pakistani Pavarotti, he is now sharing his talents with children by developing a community-based curriculum which aims to introduce young people to the beauty of music and to foster intercultural understanding. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating once more Mr. Farhan Shah. And a warm thank you to all the finalists. Thank you. Our next award is for the community sector category. Please welcome our finalists to the stage. Representing WorkSkill Australia, Ms. Nicole Dwyer. <laughs> Ms. Louisa Ao Hyo Ying. and representing Nonas Cucina, Mrs. Rebecca Staltari. <laughs> and the winner of the Community Sector Award is WorkSkill Australia, represented by Ms. Nicole Dwyer. In the past two years, WorkSkill Australia has supported more than 4,000 culturally and linguistically diverse South Australians in their quest for work, placing more than 1,200 into employment. Headquartered in Adelaide, WorkSkill is a not-for-profit charity that offers ongoing support and mentoring programs to boost independence, economic and social self-reliance, 
as migrants and refugees navigate their new life in Australia. Congratulations to WorkSkill Australia and to all community sector finalists. The next award category is media, and we can move straight to the winner, who is Mrs. Theodora Mayos. <laughs> Theodora's profiles on Greek South Australians have documented the heart of one of South Australia's most vibrant communities. From the untold stories of captains of industry to those helping in fire relief efforts, and in doing so, she has elevated the profile of South Australia's Greek community on a local, national, and even international level. Congratulations to Mrs. Theodora Mayos. We now come to the private sector category, and I welcome to the stage as the finalists, Torrens Connect, represented by Ms. Rosalind Maguire. and Aussie Discount Chemist Group and TWCM Cumberland Park Pharmacy, represented by Mrs. Sobia Ifan Hashmi. And the winner of the Private Sector Award is Aussie Discount Chemist Group and TWCM Cumberland Park Pharmacy. Aussie Discount Chemist Group has created more than 150 jobs in regional South Australia, employing migrants from 18 different nationalities who speak 21 different languages, and has assisted 35 pharmacists of different nationalities to settle in Australia. During the pandemic, the group started an innovative health program providing free flu vaccinations to new immigrants, international students, humanitarian entrants, and those residing in Australia due to border closures. Once again, congratulations to Aussie Discount Chemist Group and TWCM Cumberland Park Pharmacy and heartfelt thank you to our finalist, Torrens Connect. We now turn to the public sector category. For this category, we welcome the finalist to the stage, Mr. Peter Agala, representing Multicultural Services Department for Child Protection. and representing the Port Augusta Hospital, Flinders and Upper North Local Health Network, Mr. Craig Packard. And the winner of the Public Sector Award is Multicultural Services Department for Child Protection. Multicultural Services Department for Child Protection is a small unit with a big impact. Its culturally responsive child placement policy is the first of its kind in Australia and internationally and prioritises the placement of children with carers of similar cultural background. The team has affiliated with over 150 community organisations and has seen a 31% increase in culturally and linguistically diverse placement requests, helping children from multicultural backgrounds had the opportunity to stay connected with their heritage. Congratulations to Multicultural Services and to our other finalists. We now turn to the Volunteer Award, and in this category, the finalists are Ms. Aisha Fariha Safta. Mr. Mohammed Ali Rezai. <laughs> Mr. 
And our third finalist, Mr. Esmatullah Ahmad Zada. And I'm pleased to announce the judging panel have selected joint winners for the Volunteer Award. The first winner, please congratulate Mr. Esmatullah Ahmad Zada. <laughs> Esmatullah is a dedicated member of the Hazara community and has been an influential advocate in advising, leading, and uniting the community. He was instrumental in establishing the Tatiara Multicultural Group in 2019 and continues spending endless hours developing its core values, roles, and constitution. His informal services as a cultural advisor are invaluable to agencies who work with the Hazara community, and Esmatullah is a trusted reference point for many organizations and survivors of torture and trauma. Please also congratulate our second winner, Ms. Aisha Fariha Safta. Aisha founded the Adelaide Pakistani Women's Association with the aim of enriching the quality of life of Pakistani women living in South Australia. She regularly organises gatherings to encourage women to participate in community life and overcome isolation barriers and cultural shock after migration. She is especially to be applauded for supporting Pakistani women to establish small businesses, giving housewives turned business entrepreneurs a confidence boost and encouraging their integration into Australian society. Well done to all our deserving recipients. We now move to the Senior Volunteer Award, and I'm pleased to announce the finalists for this category are Mrs. Bira Shubela, Mrs. Letitia Dalaciana Fiebiger. <laughs> and our last finalist has also been recognized by the judging panel as a highly commended finalist, Mr. Glenn Woodward. Glenn has been commended for his contribution to Australian-Japanese relations for more than 30 years and his devotion to the citizens of South Australia for much of his life. Congratulations to Glenn on your high commendation. And I now have pleasure to announce the winner of the Senior Volunteer Award, Mrs. Vera Chuvela. From 10 years old, Vera was already supporting her fellow Croatians as a skilled interpreter. She has continued to actively contribute to community for some 47 years. She has represented the Croatian people in various capacities and continues to devote 40 hours each month assisting the older community members to attend appointments, prepare meals, and make home visits. Let's put our hands together for Vera and our other finalists. We now move to the youth category, and again, it's my pleasure to move straight to the winner of the category, Ms. Nila Siva. <laughs> Nila volunteered teaching Tamil language and dance at Adelaide Tamil School. Since completing high school seven years ago, she has been actively fostering multiculturalism as a volunteer radio presenter and Chief Coordinator of Adelaide Tamil Broadcasting Service, managing about 45 volunteers. Neela is the youngest accredited Tamil interpreter in Australia and has helped other refugees during vulnerable situations. Ms. Neela Siva.
This brings us to the final category in the 2021 Governor's Multicultural Awards, which is Outstanding Individual Achievement. Our finalists for the Outstanding Individual Achievement category are, first, Mr. Michael Radin. Our second finalist is Ms. Aisha Fariha Safda. And our third finalist, Mr. George Chin. And I have much pleasure in announcing this year's winner to be Mr. George Chin. An active and devoted advocate for the Chinese community, George is recognized for his sustained and valuable contribution to our state in many ways with tangible impact. As an executive member of the Chinatown Adelaide Committee, George helped conceive the hugely successful Chinatown Lunar New Year Street Party, one of Adelaide's major multicultural festivals, and he was instrumental in the rejuvenation of the Chinatown precinct. His leadership has been felt in many ways, and his list of other voluntary roles and advisory positions is too long to canvas here. Suffice it to say that George is a worthy winner of the Outstanding Individual Achievement Award category for his lengthy and outstanding contribution to South Australia's multicultural community. Please join me once again in congratulating George, as well as our other deserving finalists, Aisha and Michael. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the presentation of the 2021 Multicultural Awards. Please join with me in a final congratulations to all our incredible finalists and winners. And it's also my pleasure to thank Her Excellency for presenting the awards. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the uh, presentational part of the event this afternoon, uh, and I have much pleasure now in introducing the performance who will be playing for us during refreshments in the garden. Members of the Nexus Art Orchestra will be performing a collection of songs in a variety of styles and cultures. The Nexus Art Orchestra brings together top artists from all over the globe who have made Adelaide their home. The orchestra shows us that music is indeed a universal language, which brings together the richness of our state's intercultural communities. Uh, before we conclude, one more piece of uh, practical arrangements, please. Um, Corday, speaking to the award winners, ask that uh, before you enjoy the refreshments, can you please make your way to the official photo location for the photograph with Her Excellency? And can I please ask the guests to not detain them at this point of the uh, uh, proceedings? There'll be plenty of opportunity uh, in the garden afterwards.